and then I'll put 1040 and it's 182. Let's finish it. Uh, okay. So then if I go back on over here and run it, I had to increase the date range to 531 and then I've got location tracking and run it. And the, the basic idea here would be that the, if, if I was to see this by location, I can't break out the payroll by location. So they have it over here in the non-specified area. And we could do the same technique we saw in prior presentations. I might just run the payroll reports and look at each employee by location and then just make a journal entry allocating the wages from here to the proper column, which I could do with a journal entry just to wages, but just but, but just allocating a different location uh, to them. But I normally wouldn't touch any of the payroll lines, so I would rather just make another account like we did with the classes and the projects and just make another line item down here to be equal and opposite to, let's say, that 800 so I can break this thing out to whatever I want by location then and 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 not mess with the actual payroll line. So you can actually do that with the journal entries because you because the journal entry allows you to, if I go to the first tab, I'm gonna say uh, plus, and then we're gonna enter a journal entry. You might say, well, the journal entry is gonna just allow you to assign one location for the whole thing, but they actually do have a separate location line, line by line, similar to what they have with the class tracking with this form because it's not like a default like check or invoice type of form so for example i could just make another account called like wages for by location this time similar technique that we saw in prior presentations and i'm just going to say well this is going to be an expense type form and other expense uh, other business just for an example and i'm going to say that we want to reduce the 800 that's not classified. So I'm not going to put, you know, a location for that 800. And then I'm going to put it into the proper classes. Let's say it's wa same account wages. Uh, what did I call it? Wages, location, wages, location. <laughs> right there, wages by location. And then let's say that we had 600 that are going to go into location for Nevada and then uh, 200 wages by location 200 is going to go into to California so notice that it's letting me break out line by line on the journal entry notice the accounts are all the same but I'm trying to break out column by column with a journal entry and reallocate this way which is, isn't too difficult to do. It's not too tedious. So if I save and close that, let's check it out, see if it does what we would expect, save it or run it. So now I didn't mess with this payroll line item because I don't want to have stuff in the general ledger that's going to mess up any kind of payroll reporting. Instead, I'm going to put something equal and opposite to it. You might even make it like a, this, this line item be a sub account of the wages. So they're kind of connected so you can see they're right next to each other. But it's going to be equal and opposite typically. And then I can reallocate to Nevada and California to my classes, to, to the classes that I wanted to allocate to. So that's, that's a technique that, that you can use and use the location tracking. That's usually one of the, some of the complaints I've seen with the location tracking. Uh, and so, so you could do that. So then to recap the whole thing, class tracking, location tracking are kind of similar. The class tracking has a little bit more functionality to break out line item by line item. So it could be useful and more flexible for your reporting needs. But the location tracking has that added thing where you can, where you can basically give your invoices a different name or something like that.